I wanted to build a moped style e-bike and this Massimo Urban Runner e-bike looked like the perfect bike to start with. Included in the box was the bike with the handlebars loosely attached, the keys, the front fender, the battery charger, the battery, the pedals, some tools, the front wheel, and the instruction manual. As I was putting the bike together, I was surprised at how high quality it was. Everything went together fine, except for one of the pedals threads was messed up, so I just ended up using another pair of pedals that I had. By the time I was done assembling the bike, the battery was done charging, so it's time for the first ride. However, before that, I put some caps on the valve stems, and I cleaned the disc brakes off with some brake cleaner to remove any oil. Alright, here's my first impression of the bike. Going straight to full battery, full mode, full speed launch. Three, two, one. Yeah, it's pretty slow. It feels like there's like a, a light breeze pushing you on your back. That's basically the best way I can describe it. The rear rotor is rubbing, just like on all my bikes, so I guess it fits in. It's actually so weak that you can put one toe down and stop it from moving. And it just cuts out. <laughs> yeah, this thing is going to need some serious upgrades. It also has this neat feature where the speedometer doesn't work when you're coasting which means the mileage counter will also be really far off after a while of riding. However, it's not all negative as the brakes are pretty good even with the 160 rotors. Here's the hill climb test. There's literally zero chance this thing can do this, but might as well give it a try for the comparison later. That's not doing it. I don't even know if I can make it pedaling full hard up the hill. Come on. Barely, I went in the settings like this and I went and changed the display to miles an hour and I change the top speed so now it can free spin 33 mile an hour. So let's try that top speed again. There's 20. Come on! Nope. So it won't even go 28. So I'm obviously not a big fan of this bike in its current form, but I think it has potential. The suspension seems pretty good. It's got this huge rear shock and the front forks seem like they'll be fine for street riding. The frame also seems strong enough. It's got a bunch of braces in all the spots where it needs it, like there, there, and there. So they definitely didn't cheap out on that. Also, the rear dropouts are pretty thick, but they are aluminum, so I'm probably going to still do a big old torque arm on there, because I plan on running some serious power through this thing. After removing the whole electrical system, I realized the controller is inside the battery mount, which I think is a pretty cool design. I also wanted to look inside the battery, because it's pretty light for how big it is, so I think there's probably just a smaller battery inside. Well, it looks like I was right. It's got one of those blue rectangle packs. Only 10 amp hours? That's not that much. I took that pack apart and it looks pretty good, except for up here on the top. The balance wires are directly overlapping, which isn't good because, as you can see there, there's an indention, and if there's enough pressure on the top here, it can cause them to short. And just like that, all fixed. All it needed was a little bit of insulation. Enough messing around with that weak drivetrain, it's time to give this bike some real power. 
the first thing the bike needs is a motor, so I bought this motor kit off of Facebook Marketplace for 250 bucks. The controller power wires were thin aluminum wires, so I changed them to thicker copper wires. The kit also comes with a display and a throttle. I'm going to be making my own battery pack out of these EVE 3.2 amp hour 10 amp discharge cells from salvage packs from Battery Hookup. The cell spacers are also from Battery Hookup, the nickel is from AliExpress, and the BMS is from Amazon. I'll also be doing some other stuff like grips and brakes, but I'll worry about that later. This motor is going to have a lot more torque than the old one, so to make sure the axle doesn't spin, I made this huge torque arm that attaches over to the passenger peg slot. And I also made one for the other side. For the battery, I decided to make a square battery like this. I've never made a battery like this, so it'll be interesting to see how it goes. I also put a layer of fish paper in between the two halves to separate the higher voltage differences. For the bottom of the pack, I decided to take one of the copper sheets from the battery hookup packs and solder the nickel strips onto it like this. To connect the wires to the BMS, I removed the top cover of the BMS so I could put them on directly like this. After that, I soldered some nickel strip on the BMS wire and the positive wire so I could spot weld them to the cells without heating up the cells. Next, I soldered on all the balance leads. After that, I put some plastic sheets on the sides to protect the cells, and I added fish paper everywhere else. I then wrapped it in Kapton tape to protect it. After some shrink wrapping and hot gluing, the battery was done. It has an XT60 connector here for charging, and an XT90 anti-spark connector here for discharging. I wanted really good rear brakes for doing wheelies, so I put a 220mm rotor on the back and used another caliper spacer here to space the caliper out. After doing the rear brakes, I installed the throttle and the display on the handlebars and made sure all the wiring was long enough. The motor wiring was a bit too long, but I'm just going to loop it around the frame. Well, I had everything wired up, and the screen just won't turn on. This really confuses me, because I just had it up there on the bench working fine, and now it just doesn't work at all. And I went into the controller and checked all the spots where there should be voltage, and there's just nothing. So, I guess that controller's fried for some reason, even though I didn't change anything. But luckily, we got a donor over here. I recently discovered that the spot welder I used to make the battery for this scooter was not powerful enough. So I'm just going to take this scooter apart and use the controller. No one really rides it anymore anyways. The other scooter is a lot funner, like I mentioned in the video. So I got it all wired up, but it wasn't working. So I tapped into the throttle here because that's my main suspect immediately. And it was always at one volt, so I knew something was wrong. So I unplugged from this plug, plugged into the other one, and it worked. So I'm assuming this motor has an encoder plug and a Hall Effect plug, which is pretty cool, but... It can obviously mess you up. The controller power connector from the scooter used aluminum wires, which I didn't like, so I went ahead and made a copper wire one for this bike. As you can see here, this section of the frame doesn't have a perfect 90 degree angle, so to mount the battery I had to make a little aluminum bracket here. After that I drilled a hole in the frame there and cut some pieces of aluminum out to go on each side of the battery to hold it in place. This actually turned out way better than I expected. To remove the battery, all you have to do is unplug it there, take this wing nut off, and move the aluminum piece out of the way. It's really easy to pull the battery out and it holds the battery really good. The tail light runs on 12 volts, so to convert the full battery voltage down to 12 volts, I just use three resistors all wrapped together like that. I'm gonna have a wire that goes through the frame through the resistors and to the tail light. To power the headlight and tail light, I brought a power wire from down near the controller up here to the switch mounted in the aluminum. Now when you flip the switch, it gives power to the headlight and power all the way through the frame to the tail light. 
The headlight can actually take 84 volts, which was surprising since this is only a 48 volt bike. I just took the bike on its first ride and it's really fun. It's got a decent amount of power and you can even pull some wheelies on it. But I'm actually going to weld some pegs on the back here on the torque arms so that doing wheelies is a lot easier. After that, I'll clean these up a bunch and paint them and put them back on and the bike will be done. Here's the first ride of the upgraded bike. I decided to swap out the derailleur for a chain tensioner because the derailleur sat pretty low and I knew I was going to off-road this thing eventually, so I didn't want it to get ripped off. I would say that 3,600 watts, which is the amount of power this bike has now, is just about the perfect power for this bike. Sorry for the lack of audio, there's so much wind noise it wasn't even worth using. You're not missing out on much, however, because the bike is completely silent. Unlike before, that geared hub motor just screamed going down the road. If anyone has suggestions for a lav mic I can put in my helmet to record audio while riding, please leave it in the comments. Here's a quick speed test. That same hill is no match for this bike now. One of my favorite parts about these far driver controllers is the region. You can basically use it as your main brake just by barely tapping the brake lever. And as long as you're not driving too crazy, you don't even have to use your brakes. Now it's time to test out these pegs. When you're wheeling this bike, you can really tell how light it is. It's super easy to throw around in the air. This bike really has the perfect amount of power. You can go full throttle in mode 3 and it won't loop you out, but you can easily do a wheelie by pulling up on the front. Once you get some practice wheeling this bike, you can stay in the balance point by just using the region, which is pretty sweet. Because the spokes are straight spokes, they're constantly loosening up, so I went around the motor and installed Loctite on all the spokes to make sure they never loosen. After putting the bike back together, I took it to a nearby town to go exploring. That was one eventful ride. This bike has been so much fun that I'm thinking about making another one that's even more powerful. If this video gets a decent amount of views, then I'll do it. Well, that's about it. Thanks for watching.